Hi there, my name is Ulrike Rausch and with my type foundry Liebefonts, I specialize in handwriting fonts. And one of my biggest challenges is to find ways to reproduce handwriting as authentic as possible. There are a lot of technical aspects that play a role here, of course, and I will show you some of them in a bit. But of course, it's also important to know the analog writing techniques that are the model for your future typeface. While my calligraphy and lettering skills might be quite good, my everyday handwriting is actually not super beautiful and also not very consistent. So I decided to work on that and to improve my handwriting a bit. I spent my first weeks in Corona isolation with writing exercises in order to practice my handwriting skills. I worked with this book by Rosemary Sassoon and Gunlagu Breen, which I can highly recommend. And one of the first exercises was just to draw lines in order to get a firm hand and to gain control over your pen but also to find your rhythm and your natural writing angle. It was important to not only fill two or three rows, but a couple of pages with this exercise. It seemed, it seemed a little bit um, boring at the beginning, but it got actually quite meditative and relaxing in the end. One of the next steps was to use a model alphabet in order to train a correct movement and to learn how to construct certain letters and to understand the basic shapes of letters. And after a couple of days and many more filled pages um, following closely the model alphabet, the result looked quite neat, was super clear and legible, but looked also a bit um, childish. So once you've trained this um, writing a bit, the next um, step described in the book was to, to loosen up again and to find your mature personal style. Therefore, the following instruction was to write um, a sentence first carefully and then without lifting the pen anywhere. Then getting faster and faster and faster until it gets totally illegible. And from that, you will learn how you simplify certain letters and letter combinations at speed. And it helps you to show up your natural slant and um, your own letter shapes will show through. Of course, there were much more exercises. This is only a short abstract from the whole process, just to give you an idea. Um, yeah, actually, this was, this was um, a really good experience for me. Also, very meditating and refreshing break from usually working on the computer the whole day. But since I'm a type designer, it was clear that I wanted to turn my new handwriting into a font. In order to do that, I filled many, many more pages of writing, uh, writing text. So when creating a handwriting font, it's super important that you write whole words. Uh, I often see people that want to turn a handwriting into a font writing A, B, C, D. So uh, every letter isolated. And I sometimes also get inquiries from clients that ask for a quote um, of a handwriting font. And they already sent me these filled out sheets. Um, yeah, that might work for certain handwriting styles, but definitely not for connected handwriting styles. And even if you don't connect your letters in your handwriting, there are some letter combinations that may become ligature when writing fast. So you probably won't get a natural result when you use sheets like these and um, when you see the letters only isolated. Well, after writing several sheets with whole words, I had all these filled pages and then I examined the writing and analyzed how letters connect and how the form of a letter changes in a specific constellation of letters. And um, yeah, for, for example, I realized the lowercase s was so versatile. I had so many different writing styles for the s, always depending um, which letter was preceding or following. Um, yeah, and then I decided which letters I would digitize and isolate from the word and use in my font. But I was not only looking for the best single letter letters, um, but also for character pairs and groups of letters that I would turn into a ligature. 
So the next steps, uh, so the next step for the scans of my characters would usually have been to decide how to vectorize them, either by drawing a path along the letter shape, which looks nice and smooth, but also a little bit too clean, or by auto tracing them in Illustrator in order to get this uneven structure. But even with this uneven structure, it looks not very natural. Not to mention that adjusting letter shapes with this massive amount of nodes is a nightmare. <laughs> um, what's still missing here um, is the unevenness of the color tones, right? You can see that there's so much happening here in this uh, forms and this structure. So you won't be able to reproduce that with vector shapes. So I decided to make use of the color font technology. For those who have never heard about color fonts, there are two possibilities. Um, you can store vectors in a color font, but also bitmap images. And the latter is basically like writing with a photo. And that allows me to maintain all these structures and different shades uh, of blue. Um, <clears throat> talking about structure as a funny side note, when I started my writing exercise at the beginning, I thought, I have to get myself a high quality ballpoint pen. Um, I also sev ordered several refills because I knew I would write a lot and fill up many pages and it was such a nice writing experience with this pen, super th smooth and soft and almost no resistance on paper and even though it was not super expensive, it felt so good to have spent at least some money to have a more professional equipment and I thought yeah, it's important to have good tools for a job like that. Um, yeah, but fortunately I made some test scans before writing all the words that I needed for um, digitizing and I saw that there was almost no structure in the high quality pen. So usually this might be a good thing, but that here it looks almost like um, the vectorized line. Um, but what I wanted was all the dirty unevenness um, and yeah, make it, that, that make it look more authentic. So I went back to the super cheap 10 for 1 euro ballpoint pens in order to get more uneven and dirty results. Okay, back to color fonts. I worked with glyphs. For a bitmap color font you place all your images of the letters into your corresponding bounding box, which looks like this. Um, and then actually you're able to do the kerning and spacing as you are used to with regular vector shapes. But despite that, um, the workflow was um, quite exhausting because for the adjustments uh, on the letter forms, for example, in order to get the connections to the next letter right, the right angle and the right length of the connecting stroke, for each character I had to go back and forth between Photoshop and Glyphs, back to Photoshop, Glyphs, Photoshop, Glyphs, Glyphs, until the result was satisfying. And yeah, this was a little bit tedious. The cool thing though is that color fonts also support open type features. Yay! <laughs> um, so I added some alternatives for each letter that all look a little bit different to get a more authentic handmade look. Then each letter has at least one version that has no connecting stroke to the right because there are some letters that don't want to be connected and also because I think um, a text looks more natural if not all the letters in a word are always connected, but if there are natural pen lifts now and then. Here is a selection of ligatures to give the writing a more natural flow. Of course, also the ligatures need to have an alternative form. And then there are some letters um, that have different versions depending on the letter that follows. So connecting on top or from the bottom or not at all. I would have loved to add even more ligatures and, uh, and alternatives um, as I'm used to do with my normal vector fonts, but since all these PNGs in the glyphs file add up and the file size is huge, <laughs> um, at the beginning the OTF file I generated had more than 60 megabyte. <laughs> so I decided to get rid of some characters and I also used some 
compression tools for the PNGs that are embedded in the font. So yeah, now the file size of the final OTF file has 18 megabytes, which is still quite massive, but for the use in desktop apps like InDesign, Word or Pages, the file size um, doesn't matter that much. So the result looks like this. Please welcome Liebe Heide. Liebe Heide is a novel color font that creates natural ballpoint pen writings. And um, yeah, I have to admit that I'm actually super happy with the result and also amazed to have a font that um, authentically reproduces handwriting in such a degree that uh, you almost can't tell, uh, can't tell it from real analog writing. Since the font uses PNGs, unlike vectors, these are not scalable infinitely. Some of you might wonder how large can it get? So the highest resolution in the font allows you to, um, to print the letters in approximately 20 centimeters height. Above that, it starts getting blurry and pixelated. Um, when I say the um, the biggest resolution, that means um, that you can store multiple resolution, resolutions in your color font. Liebe Heide, for example, has three different PNG sizes and the software like Adobe InDesign, for example, or your web browser only picks the resolution it needs for a specific font size. So it's not loading the big images when all it needs is a tiny size of the letters. Last year I played around with that effect a little bit. I made this not so beautiful color font, <laughs> but the cool thing here is that it has optical sizes. So the higher resolution has more details, whereas the low resolution has a reduced letter shape. And when you use the font, in a, a smaller font sizes at a certain point, the image switches to the simple version that is more legible in smaller sizes. And for the bigger sizes, you get all the swashes and ink blobs and so on. And here is another fun use case for the resolution layers. I made a color gradient from purple to yellowish. And when changing the font size, you have an almost seamless interpolation. <laughs> of course, it's not an interpolation, um, but you have an almost seamless gradient between the colors. Coming back to Liebe Heide. As I already mentioned before, you can, uh, of course, also have open type features in color fonts. For example, the contextual alternates and ligatures. These should be active by default in most applications. Um, so, when, so depending on the context, the letters adjust automatically while you type. And here is another one. Um, the ligature feature also automatically replaces certain characters by an ballpoint pen emoji or by different styles of arrows. So for example, column hyphen parenthesis or column hyphen capital D less and three turns into a heart and so on. But there are also some fun features like the strike through and underline feature in order to have the full handwriting experience.
Um, these two features, so underline and strike through, are not active but de by default, but you have to activate them manually through uh, Stylistic Set. You can even use Lieberheide in Microsoft Word on your Mac, not on Windows, sorry. Um, but unlike almost all other applications where contextual alternates and ligatures are active by default, you have to turn these features on manually. Uh, so with Command D you will get the font menu and here you can find or you can activate the kerning ligatures and contextual alternates and even the strike through and underline feature in the stylistic sets. Since the PNG in the font have a transparent background, you can also place Lieberheide on a colored image, even though it looks best on lighter backgrounds and uh, not super dark ones. Well, also ballpoint pen on black is not super good looking. <laughs> but if the background is not white, the best thing is to turn on the layer effect darken, so all the white details in the structure get transparent. For the type tester on my own website, I made a subsetted web font for, uh, with a reduced character set. So instead of having 500-ish characters, the web font has about 300 and it um, only holds the low resolution images. It still has 4 megabyte, but yes, color fonts also work in most browsers. Yay, super cool! And with that, I'm, going to, uh, I'm coming to the end and I'm saying thank you for your attention and your interest in color fonts. Thank you so much.